Hello, I'm Felipe Quiroz, also known as Prince of Queens. Uh, I'm a DJ, multi-instrumentalist, producer. Uh, I play in a band called Combo Chimbita, and I DJ and produce as Prince of Queens. I'm from Colombia and I uh, migrated to New York City when I was 15. And um, I've been living in New York City for 20 years now. And um, I love uh, dance music, underground dance music, electronic music, synthesizers, and I think uh, the immigrant experience has really sort of shaped a lot of uh, everything that I do creatively. I moved when I was a teenager from Bogota, from Colombia, and. Um, to live in New York City with my mom and my dad, and like pretty unexpectedly and kind of all of a sudden. And, uh, you know, I, I was undocumented for a while. I wasn't able to go back to Colombia for a while, many years, like 16 years. Um, and, you know, I, I, and, and when I was a teenager, when I was in high school and starting college here in New York City, like I, I, I started to really, maybe look back and think back and appreciate things about Colombian and, and, and Latinx cultures that maybe when I was there, I didn't really see before. Sort of being far away from home, you know? I started collecting and buying records, I don't know, like 12, 13 years ago, and in thrift stores and stuff. And you know, if you go to thrift stores or like record stores back in the day, like you find like so much music from all over the world that was made here in New York City, you know? And I, I started listening to a lot of Haitian music, music from Haiti, and I was like, this is amazing. And then I realized like, wow, like, Compa, which is the Haitian rhythm, is like, uh, it sounded very similar to a lot of music from Joa, Joa Roj, which is a Colombian artist. Uh, when I realized like, oh wow, he kind of stole the Haitian rhythm, and people in Colombia don't even, know that is compa they think it's like joe arroyo joe son but it's like no he was like totally taking the haitian stuff and and that was just like poof, just blew my mind you know like little things like that you start finding the connections between how music and migration travels and and it's just it's like a fascinating and really um deep tunnel you know The more I go into music and explore records, and I, the more I find like crazy connections. Like in K Verdian, they had this like fixation with cumbia too, because it's somehow like you know the records of Colombia were getting there. So there's a lot of cumbia bands from K Verde, which is like amazing. You know, it's like African people making cumbia. I never really paid that much attention to cumbia when I was a teenager. I was like into punk or whatever. Like that was kind of like, yeah, like my parents' music or whatever. And then I was like, started noticing a lot of really interesting, like weird cumbia from Mexico, like the sonideros. And then I was like, wow. And then I realized like, wow, there's like a whole sonidero culture in New York City. Son sonideros? Mm -hmm. what, what, what is that? Sonideros are, it's a whole like uh, DJ culture in Mexico. It's all over Mexico. It's a lot in Northern Mexico, Monterrey, um, but it's also in La Ciudad de Mexico. The story goes like the, the records that were get, coming in from Colombia. Some people, some dancers like to play, like they were at 45 and they, le they like to play at 33, which is like way slower down. So like a lot of Colombia was like really like faster and they play like super slow. Like the vocals sound like, um, like pitched down. And uh, it became like a whole culture, a whole scene. And, um, uh, but it really is just DJ culture, sound system culture. Uh, they have, sound system bottles, huge like party light systems. And it's a really big culture in Mexico. Yeah, I think it's interesting like the, um, <clears throat> like there's the phases in each culture where people start to really revolutionize the way the instru instruments and the sounds and the rhythms are used and they start bringing in other cultures music. And then there's like the period where the machines right. come into, like, when you were talking about John Petta, I was mm -hmm. thinking about dub and yeah. like, just the way that it, like, 
I mean, it's, it was simple at first. It's just mm -hmm. like, oh, I'll, I'll use a mixer yeah. as an instrument. But yeah. Like the way that electronic machines start to like become a part of the progression. It totally. Seems like, I don't know. Yeah. No, I mean, it's always been there, you know, I like music and technology. Uh, it's, they're almost, it, you know, we tend to think like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get this machine and I'm gonna like make it, you know, what I want. But most often the machine also tells you like, no, you know, you, this like it comes out, it kind of gives you back something that you don't really expect. And, and it's, it's like, oh, okay, you know, it's like you kind of have to, it's like another, you know, it's like a collaboration really. And uh, I mean, and throughout history, I think like a lot of uh, really great electronic music uh, has come out of like those weird mistakes that are not intended. You know, I mean, the Roland 808 was supposed to be kind of like, you know, like the Japanese designer to make like, oh, you know, you can play guitar and play along with this beat, you know. And it wasn't until like, you know, folks in, in, in Chicago were like, oh, well, just make some crazy house music with this, you know, and then turn it into a whole other thing. All of those stories, like, you see, it, it, that's, that's my music world, like, how music travels, um, you know, across the Atlantic and across Avia Yala, to, through mostly, honestly, like, um, working communities, you know, um, and, 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 mostly um culture that is not often seen as like relevant or important or you know high class or whatever um but it's more of the the working class folk uh, that come up with all this really crazy cool uh musical mixes and twists you know so i take a lot of that stuff and then i turn it into a little bit of the my total obsession with techno and house, you know, which is a lot of what I love. And, and that's kind of the musical world, I mean. <laughs> yeah. I don't like, is there like happy sounding music? <laughs> Not that I don't like it, but it doesn't really resonate with me. Like major scale stuff, it's just kind of like, I don't know, I feel like, you know, we, We've did. Um, I personally like to make a lot of melancholic and deep kind of emotional music, but that makes you dance. Mm. I think that's that's something that very powerful that music can do. That it's a combination of this like this like physical and emotional um, combination that you can create in music that is really really powerful. Um, if you can feel some strong emotion and also kind of keep your body moving it I, I sort of try to strive for that often in, in in a lot of the stuff that I do whether it's with the band or with my own stuff or DJing I feel like DJing is a really awesome for me at least it really helps me figure out what I want to make or what, what I want to produce like when you're you know buying records or mixing two songs or two blends you, you i it's like i hear stuff and it's like oh i wish there was a song that did this you know like i feel like djing is a really amazing way to inform that informs me what i want to make
Something of like that. <laughs> nice.